Okay, Paul Wardy. All right, you you did a lot of bit of research on the uh, on the O data side, right? You did a little bit of lookup for uh, for the SQL query conversion. Did you get a chance to take a look at that? I saw your messages in the chat. You're impatiently wanting to kind of show the problems that you've discovered. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it just come across a few little bits that I kind of wasn't expecting to come across um, and kind of didn't really know that they were problems until they were in my way, essentially. <laughs> um, so let's get this. Um, all right. Okay. Sorry, bear with me. For some reason, um, in my ultimate wisdom, I decided to click accept on a dialogue without actually reading it because, you know. <laughs> when do engineers ever? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody reads this EULA, man. Nobody reads this end user agreement. Nobody. Yeah, and so what, what happened was that uh, I think Chrome updated and they've added this new like user profiles thing mm. in now and i clicked accept without thinking and it's just logged me out of everything and mm. now whenever i do anything i get like oh you need to go through like two-factor auth checks and stuff because mm -hmm. i've got two-factor obviously enabled on like everything of value uh -huh. so i'm sitting here like oh right anyway <laughs> All right. So I've just created in our test projects, I've just created like a just trying stuff test mm -hmm. and I've created a sample O expression that we can kind of play with. And basically all I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, my query is a root node that contains a select node that contains name and job title as the two sort of properties that I'm selecting. If I go down to the bottom here, skipping over the code i've defined a little person class and i've said yeah. i've got name and job title and the plan was that we were going to use entity frameworks so yeah. db context and yep. I've, I've defined um a subtype of db context generically and i said hey i've got one set which is whatever the generic parameter is when i create yep. one of these um, and I called it people because I'm using person as my example, but it doesn't yep. kind of really matter what it's called. Yep. Um, I found when I started playing with EF, uh, if you want it, any it wants kind of, a connection string. Damn. Yeah. If, if you want any kind of, but it, it, the thing is, right, it generates SQL, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't know whether it's generating Microsoft SQL or MySQL or like some other variant. Of it's SQL. just SQL. Yeah. 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 And because the languages are actually slightly different when you compare different SQL variations, mm -hmm. um, you know, like Microsoft SQL, we, we have top N number, for example, in MySQL, they'll have limit mm -hmm. N number. So yeah, these subtle differences do make a difference, but it's no different to like the keywords differences between say Java as the most recent example that you've been playing yeah with, did you, you see know. yeah did you see this guy you know he wants to yeah, you yeah. know I, that was out of the blue he's like dude you know i see what your guys are doing with odata neo i i didn't expect that one that one was a surprise you know which makes me think like who else is out there in these communities that we can reach to i'm, I'm really excited about ethan it's pretty cool you know anyway I've, I've, i myself uh, have done some like like the way he explained his start where he started playing with um, salesforce integrations uh, that was how i kind of got my exposure to java and a friend of mine was doing an open university degree and a lot of the the end um, modules in that were um, were java based assignments that you had to use like um, the java um, integrated development environments right and and, and do net beans net, net beans and uh, j developer and i remember yeah. net beans and eclipse do you remember eclipse, and eclipse yeah and, so and, yeah and... I, I have some experience with it but it is somewhat limited i'll accept that <laughs> um, I, I saw him setting up all these uh, edm uh, properties one by one and I was like, yeah. uh, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, Does Java not what? have reflection? Yeah. Like, like what the why hell? Are, <laughs> yeah. Why are you doing that by hand? That's just a lot, a lot of work. And I was, and he was like, well, that's yeah. how we do it. That's how we're supposed to do it. 
It's like, man, that's crazy. That's some crazy business right there. Uh -huh. I, I remember thinking when I was helping my friend with one of his uh, university modules that um, we ended up writing something like 50 lines of code. And all we wanted to do was read a string out of a file, out of a text document. And I'm like, seriously, man, like no. C sharp, this is literally one line of code. Yep, literally, you know, file that, <laughs> read all lines, done. Like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Uh, it just, it, it baffled me. I think you can actually nowadays you can just say file dot read all text and then yep. give that the path and it just yep. gives you a string. Yep. <laughs> read all lines, read all text, read all bytes. You know, you can not just the one thing. There's like no the API I I we know that. Like the dot net the dot net API is is supreme. It's supreme. You know, it's it's the ecosystem, Paul. Like C sharp as a language might be okay you know there is java and Perl and scala and all these languages out there but the ecosystem paul that's where you know oh you have a library you have a language you have an ide and you have a, a cloud so this these three things and now we have github with the pipelines what else do you want right like it's like an engineer heaven you know you're just a click of a button and everything is just kind of building itself up for you you know i i don't know why other uh, ecosystems are not learning from that. Why aren't they not kind of taking away that experience and doing it? Because I remember working with Scala, there was a lot of legwork, you know, a lot of legwork. I don't know why we had to, you know, why people are doing that. I think it's community support. Also, Microsoft is putting billions of dollars behind this work, you know, like a lot. Like there's an entire division at Microsoft called the development division. We call them the div dev. That's where all these Scott Hanselmans and you know, Martin, uh, sorry, David Fowler's and, you know, all of these folks, they're all over there. And, you know, there's just hundreds of engineers over there sitting behind these platforms trying to push it to the next level. It's it's not a coincidence that it's that simple. It's just a lot of work. You know what I mean? And I they're also nice have... people. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, I guess when you have a company like Microsoft, which is considered to be sort of a market leader to some extent, well, to every extent, really, um, the expectation is that Microsoft then should be progressing the industry as a whole, right? Because of the nature of what they do. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you do that, right? You you get the brightest minds in the industry, you stick them in a room together and you say, come on, guys, what new ideas have you got? Yep. One of them's going to yep. come up with something. And yep. the other 99 are going to say, ah, but I can make that better. Yep. You That's know? exactly what it is. That's and exactly what it is. It's a numbers game, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> ahead, I guess it's a case of like, you know, you get you get the right heads together and things will happen, you know, and it's just a matter of getting the heads together. So when yep. you're when you're Microsoft, it's kind of like, well, how much is it going to cost me? But beyond yeah. that, that's it. There is no limit. Right. Yeah. But because Microsoft effectively has an unlimited budget these days. Yeah. Yep. It kind of opens up a lot of opportunities and. You know, being the other end of the scale, you know, where I work in a in a very sort of, I mean, there's ten of us in the whole company, right? Yeah. But I mean, we startup, we're interacting yeah. with, yeah, we're basically startup territory. But the um, the company's been running for 15 years, and we the bulk of our clients are like Fortune 500 companies or the tier below that. Um, so it's like massive business, but very small team, and we achieve a lot with not a lot, and. Uh, it's well it's stuff like what you know what we're doing here and, and what, what i've been doing with the, the standard for example that makes the difference right yep. because well-structured code will save you ridiculous amounts of time yeah um, and people don't realize that you know I, I did some contract work for some other companies that were far bigger they had bigger teams but their code bases were a mess and of yep. course all their teams were doing like i'd have a ticket to like I don't know, add an item to a drop down list was one example that I had. And it was a week long effort. You know, and I remember thinking, this is ridiculous. Like, as a developer, well, why am I wasting my time with this? this? This is not valuable effort. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just like, I think the, the trick is obviously spend the time where it's useful, right? Yep. Yep. So, on Anyways, that note. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So you so you created yeah. It's, it's true. So you created this kind of you know bizarro test DB context, right? Do you, yeah, do, you so do you really need that where T is? Oh, because you. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing is because I don't actually have a, a table as such, I just have to say, hey, this thing doesn't have a, a primary key. Um, I think EF will, will still generate SQL from it, but I haven't quite gotten that far yet. And I'll explain as we go on why. Yep. Um, so essentially, this connection string, <laughs> this was funny, right? There's some validation on it. You can't give yep. it null. You can't give it an empty string. You have to give it a valid connection <laughs> string. So, And it must I have went, certain parameters in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I went, fine. Valid is dot, which means localhost, and some database name. And as far as EF is concerned, if that doesn't exist, obviously, that's still valid because it can then build that as part of migrations and things like that. So this is a full and complete valid connection string as far as EF is concerned. And I was like, okay, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the absolute bare minimum requirement then for a bare bones DB context. Um, mm -hmm. So what I did, this is where things get interesting. I built a unit test and I basically said in my unit test, okay, I'm gonna construct myself um, an expression service Nice. with a broker yep. um, so these are the, the things that we've already built and tested so i know that these things work so i yep. don't have to worry about having yep. problems there yep. and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass in my my o expression that i've built up here nice. and i'm going to get back my o expression with my computed expression expression, the expression yep. property so when yep. i say um o expression down here dot expression what I'm actually getting back stuff. here is yep. an expression tree, and it's giving me that root node in the yep. expression tree. Yep. So what I'm trying to do here is essentially I'm I'm generating an expression of type T. So this yep. is why I've have I've defined this person class so that it mm -hmm. knows what it's trying to build an expression for. Mm -hmm. um, internally, as per previous sessions, we don't need to go into the details of it, but essentially. The expression tree that's built using Roslyn, it defines a new list of T. So in this mm -hmm. case, T is person, and then it builds the expression on top of that. And that's how we can define, essentially, the expression is valid, because I'm yep. not getting any, if you like, com compilation expression uh, exceptions or anything like that that we're already yep. handling. So um, what I've then tried to do then is I've defined a get SQL from expression method. Yeah, what um, you expect. Yeah, yeah. So I pass in my O expression and I say, right, I'm interested in getting a SQL statement out. So I'm, I'm returning a string mm -hmm. um, and I need to define what my set type set. is. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what I do here is I, I create a new instance of my fake, you know, harness Context, only DB yep. context, mm -hmm. um, which is now going to have a set of type T set which in yeah. this case, because of the way I'm calling it, is person. Yep. Um, and then I can get my source set. So what this gives me is an I queryable of type person, yeah. okay, which is provided by EF. Now, yep. when we run this, we get a um, what EF refers to as a query root. So if I, um, if I uh, step into this uh, in here, here we go. Let's do it. Um, so this is where I kind of got, uh -huh. uh, did I leave it not building? Oh yeah, it's because uh, in order to illustrate it, I um, made this apply call and I said, hey, this is the thing that I'm trying to figure out how to implement. Right. So right. I'll, I'll comment that out. Um, right. Let's do it, Paul. Let's see. What up, Sam? Good morning, sunshine. Hey, Sam. <laughs> Sam's going to go, oh, you're an idiot. This is how you do it, one liner. <laughs> so that's fine. So um, what we see here is my source from EF is, uh -huh. is this is this thing here. Is, uh, mm. Oh, you can't see the pop-up. Um, so basically, uh, it says it's uh, an internal DB set. Can, can um, you open a quick, quick, uh, quick, what is it? Quick watch, yeah, please, let's, Paul. Let's put it in a watch or this one, that one works too. Is this um, rendering okay? What I've done yeah, is yeah. I shrunk the window down. No, it's so perfect. It... This is this is a perfect size. I hope everyone that right. actually because because yesterday, you know, Ethan he had his window shr shrunk like this. 
you know and i'm like dude extend extend you know <laughs> but anyway just let's just keep going this is perfect uh -huh. i went for sort of roughly around the 120 character limit because i figured <laughs> that's the, the size that's, that's, right? that's the size <laughs> that's the size yeah the standard so, size. <laughs> so you can see here i've got a uh, um what's going uh -huh. on here <laughs> this is actually what i'm seeing this is ra random okay so what i've got here is what is going on? Mr. Oh my Studio? god. Oh my god. What is happening? What happened to your new computer? I thought you had good memory. <laughs> this, this is a brand new machine. Yeah. Like, it's bonkers. Right. Here we go. Okay, brother. Okay. See. So let's, let's pin this. Uh, no, okay. let's not pin this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you can see here it says internal DB, IDB set of type person, right? Yeah. Which is my person class. Yes, uh, sir. Because of where it's defined, it's, you know, in yeah. current namespace. So um, a DB set, if, if I grab off of that the expression, uh, then we get this thing called a query root expression. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. So this is an EF, mm -hmm. um, effectively, mm -hmm. expression mm -hmm. node. I think they extended now, the existing expression. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah. so my... My thinking here is that the logic that we need to, to, to do is to take this, uh, if, if we grab O expression here, okay. um, O expression dot expression, um, you can see here that our root node is actually a list. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're calling dot select the uh, link um, extension method on lists on that root node so that's um that's another node essentially so my thinking is that what we want to do is we want to take the children of the expression that we've got and mm -hmm. append those to the root node from our query root essentially our query root expression Ex mm -hmm. expand the the all expression dot expression yeah another not tab is call yes so this is the thing right the the root node is saying hey we're going to be calling a select method but it's expecting to call a select method on an i list or a list object and uh what we actually want to do is we want to call a select method on a query root which is a different type of expression but I, so I don't know if that results in different method info or something internally within the expression tree so it might be that we haven't quite got exactly what we wanted from the expression service so one idea that i had was up front we build the db context in say an orchestration service or something and we pass in the set as the source and we mm. get back out the string right um and so we never really get the expression tree, if that makes sense. We only ever get the result from it. So we would either get a SQL statement or we would get a fully formed. We I could, we could carry the expression out too as a common language across all. It will be interesting to see what that looks like in Java because I don't know if they have expressions. I don't know what they have. Sam, did you see that session? Yeah. Did you get a chance? The Java session? Okay. Some, some dude that wants to he wants to port odata neo into java I'll, I'll brief you on it later are you in the office today no okay when you come so, to the so office. this is this is my worry one we've used roslyn to get this far yeah um and two with expression trees i feel like this is a really neat feature of the common language runtime yeah and i think that by taking advantage of either of these features what we're really doing is saying hey our ecosystem is bloody awesome look yep. at how much we can cheat yeah so it's not going to translate well yeah um, so my biggest worries here is like ideally what we want is a library that we could literally just say copy the code drop it into a new java project and then just mm -hmm. tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. but obviously whenever we use these kind of internal dependencies although we've had this net advantage of being able to kind of shorten the project on our end yeah it it effect it effectively leaves us still problems to solve on the other end because i yeah. don't know if for example you can just call up the java compiler yeah yeah like can you do that from within java probably i don't know i mean 
they've got reflection, right? If I recall. So. I, I I really hope so. If they don't, I don't know how they got that far in life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, it's literally in every enterprise application I know of. Like you know, World you know um, World Health Organization. They're running. They're running O data, right? Yeah. And I'm and I I highly doubt that it's .NET sitting behind the scene. I think it's Java or something. So someone figured it out somewhere. You know, I also think that I, I also think that Java world needs a standard. They really do. They're just a, a big mess of processors and producers and resources and what the heck is going on there. You know, I have no idea. So so anyway, but I do like Makito, though. I don't know if you heard of it. Their 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 testing and mocking frameworks are amazing. And I told you I'm jealous, like their methods can tell you what exceptions these methods will be throwing which is very, very important to us, right? Anyway, keep going, my friend. Does it actually produce a SQL? <laughs> it doesn't, no, because I couldn't figure out how to apply my O, o expression expression property to... Uh, so I've, ca I've called into this apply thing, and you see this line of code that I yeah, uh, commented yeah, out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I was kind of asking the question in the chat during the week. I was like, how do I apply... Yeah. my expression to my iQueryable and then get back the complete iQueryable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I kind of couldn't figure out an obvious way to do that. But I, then I sort of thought about it for a minute and I was like, I know just the guy for this. <laughs> it Sam. turns out that somebody <laughs> yes. has written exactly this block of code <laughs> somehow in the existing OData framework, right? Sam, how do we do this? Do you know anything? It's not OData related. It's related uh, to Entid entity basic framework. knowledge of program. <laughs> okay, thanks for insulting all of us. Can you just give us the answer without yeah, kind of belittling, <laughs> berating the Since crap the out of us? <laughs> the core, so we can mm -hmm. convert, right? Cast the expression as a call expression, right? So, so cast the expression as a call expression. So yeah, in, in your apply method. method, in your apply method. In the apply method, okay. So go okay, inside okay, the apply okay. method. He couldn't just give us the advice. He has to say, that's just basic common knowledge, you guys. <laughs> okay, Sam. So yeah. I've got my root, root expression when I'm You know applying. I know where your office is, right? <laughs> so you want to cast this as a call expression, right? Most of the call expression, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the call. Let's call that that. There we go. Right. Like the Backstreet Boys song. The yeah. The so the call maybe has a message info. I think. The call dot. Method info. Uh, method. Yeah. Method. Yeah. Method dot method info then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah keep going. Method info. Method info. Yeah, yeah, type in dot method info. See if you have method info inside the method. So do dot in there. Yeah, no, that, that is the method info there. Yeah. Oh, perfect, perfect. So you perfect. can see this method info tells which method call in this call expression. Right. right? So if I get the name, that will say select. So now you, you right? can invoke this method on again. Uh, okay, so do we need invoke. to do the same thing? What the, here? The, the call dot method dot invoke. Can we call invoke? Oh, invoke, invoke. Okay, oh. on the method, on the method itself, Sam. Hmm? On line eighty-eight. Okay, so go to line eighty-eight, Paul. Uh, here, yeah. Yeah, type method in dot. Yeah, remove that and just do method dot invoke. Invoke. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so wanna... uh, we provided the source, Ryan. Uh, oh, okay. So what I can give that the to... root expression. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. The root expression or the source? Source. Yeah, that's the source. source. Okay. So we, we can consider like it's a um, function call. It's a method call. Um, no, you should provide the second uh, parameter, Ryan. So. It's like, uh, can you uh, um, just type the dot select? Uh, we can uh, consider about to review the syntax of the select method belong to query. Select. Yeah, but that's for the enumerable. You can call uh, dot as queryable dot select. 
Yeah. F12 or go to the definition. So that one's an expression of type. You can see it, it's a. Uh, it's an uh, extension method. The first uh, parameter is a source. Okay. This is what we want, right? Yes, the second one is expression. It means it's a select. It's a select. It means it's it's uh it's a lambda expression. Right. So you can retrieve it from the um the method dot argues the second one. Good. Go back to your code. So in here, oh, the person now. Uh, like 89. Yeah. yeah, I think it's an object array, right? New object array. New object array. Okay. Oh, so he can. No, 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 no. He's saying the input parameters will be an array of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it should be the call. The call. The call. Dot the argues, uh, parameters, right? Arguments or parameters. Uh, Arguments. Yeah. Yeah. And the second one. Second, second one. Is okay. Second one. Uh, is so that one. would be one, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second one is one. Sorry, I'm in Java mode. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm in PHP mode. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the internet, right? <laughs> So I was like, this is going to be a long time, like day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this will this will actually call it, right? So this is going to call it on the source. Yes. Yeah, so but what uh, we want to do is we want to attach it, not call it. Right? Yeah, it, it means call a method. It's called a select method again on this source. Call oh, it means, of course, because we're calling, yeah, calling select. It's, it's then built a, a new, because right. it's available. It means just append the expression to the equalable. Okay. So, so this returns an object, which I'm expecting to be. It should be equalable. Yeah, right? again. Um, yeah, but he's he might need to do some casting, right? Yeah, you I should think. cast to that. No equals that. Yeah. So some equalable. Mm. Um, although that that could be anything, actually. It is valid at this point to return an object, isn't it? It can be anything, but you, you, what, you understand. That's just well, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just yeah. Let's let's try that then. So if I just return that, um, and then oh, I don't need that, do I? You oh, have to speak really... later. Make sure it can work first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. I can't remember the code. Okay, yes, I am. <laughs> Sam. Okay, okay, here we go. So we've gotten this far. So let's step into it. And exception. Let's go. Yeah, let's let's wrap a try catch around it then, shall we? Let's see. Uh... Let's see what we get. Oh. There's no exception, right? It works. No. It, did, it didn't work. Of course it doesn't work. Nothing's ever easy. <laughs> it kind of works. It does not work, Sam. It doesn't work? No work. No work, my friend. See, you made you made Paul write exception in British English. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Hey, 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 less of that. Less of that. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so it's a static method. You kind of invoke as a, a method on uh, source. So stop it yet. Stop debug. Oh, okay. Why not? Put the source as now, and then move source to the object array. Ooh. Yes, oh, no. oh, yeah. So your source is null. Okay. 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 This is null. It's a static method. Okay. So there's no instance to call the method. And uh, let's debug it again. Ooh, let's see the exception now. Uh, is the exception? 
Yeah. Make sure make sure you have the same type, right? What's the exception? It says a unary expression can't be converted to an Put, expression. Copy the expression type. into the word. Uh, the the exception, you mean? Should we get this message up? Can you guys read this? Oh, lovely. There we go. Is that readable? Oh. Yeah, make sure the second is a, uh, is not a unit expression. So we should uh, retrieve the... Um, yeah, close it. And let's de debug to see what's the uh, expression... Uh, Show me the expression again. Uh, so it'll be this one, yeah? yeah. Copy it into the watch. Yeah. So uh, expression. Yeah. Expand it. What's the set? Uh, argu arguments. Uh, arguments. A generic list and an anonymous type. Oh, a function. Yeah, the expand returns. the second one. Second one. Mm -hmm. So it's caught. You know the type is caught. Um, so we needed to retrieve the... Um, it's a generic expression. Yeah, let's retrieve the argument as a second argu argument and uh, Let's convert it to a uh, union expression first. Uh, what, so you want to cast it? Yeah, so instant new line. In here? Cast this? No, no, no. Don't do, don't the, don't do that. No? I mean, um, instant new line. Uh, before this, uh, before, uh, after 84. In here? Will you choose the the core? Cool. Dot arguments one one as as you name you name you name you know expression right? Yeah. How do you say that? How do you say that, Paul? Is it Andre or Unary or what is it? Unary. Unary. Okay. Yeah. Unary. Think think binary. Binary, unary, okay. Unary, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. I had to ask a freaking British guy to tell me. <laughs> and uh, of course, <laughs> put a black point at uh, eighty-eight. <laughs> you love it, really. I love it. Unary. Love it. <laughs> unary, okay. Hassan, Every day is an English lesson, as well yeah. as a C sharp. Lesson. Water. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. All right. I kind of see the thing. <laughs> yeah, I've got a thing. Copy the thing to the watch. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So we use. Oh, the, do you see it? Do you see it? Name equal object name. Opera to mm. replace the code at line eighty-eight. Let's try that. So line eighty-eight. Right. Yeah. Passing the thing. Yeah. You replace the, the core dot arguments one as the thing dot opera dot opera. That's I need to find more interesting variable names so that I can annoy Hassan with opera, them when he then has to code for opera. Opera. Oh, operand. Okay. Operand. Okay. Operand. okay. Seeing dot. Add dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot. Opera. Op. Operand. Operand. There it is. Operand. Operand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Sam. Why is it so freaking painful? Yeah. Like, what? what's going on? <laughs> I'll I'll be back with you guys in a second. Keep going on the session, okay? I hope that doesn't end it. I don't think Slacker. it does. I'll be back. Hot time. <laughs> I wonder if I we can get his YouTube channel shut down by just. I, I I don't know if I left. It would end up the channel. Let's see. I hope it doesn't. I'll be back. Alright. How long are you gonna be? Oh no. Oh, I'm gonna be just ten minutes. Just keep going.
Okay. I'm even gonna do this. Just. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Step. Oh, it didn't fall into the uh, exception. And oh, I got some sequel. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that. That's uh, not bad. Yes, but it can work. That's pretty good. Right, so um select uh, name job title belong people table so, this so what you are select looks like is yeah that's ref generated oh there is actually a new line in there interesting <laughs> i wonder why they put new lines in there because like presumably most of the time this is consumed by systems it's not really consumed by people is it so like formatting queries is not really I suppose if you get a problem and you have to debug it, it does make sense. Okay, so that should make the test pass, I believe. It does. If we take this try catch out. Oh, right, so. I don't know why the C sharp convert a uh, expression to a uh, unit expression first. Yeah, what's the thing there? Is that is that an assumption we can make here? So given this expression, we can always assume that we've got a unary. I read a material um, mentioning that, but I can't remember the the detail. It's a couple couple months ago. Quarter expression, let's see. Let's search that quarter. Thank you. Expression quarter POT. Expand access. Huh. What's wrong? I was just looking, just reading through the code, just out of curiosity. <laughs> okay, so this um, this is probably what we now need to package up into a new service, right? So in principle, I've I've kind of solved the problem, but I've done it in a just a random file that I've chucked into the test project at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, once we've got the SQL, uh, the plan was to take that and translate it into um ro data right to the to the query yeah so we probably want to do something like um uh, let's have a look. so we've got get sql from expressions then we can do something like get tokens uh, oh token array get tokens Actually, it'd be a single O token, wouldn't it? Get tokens from SQL. String SQL. We can just chuck this into here, right? Yeah, Paul, but I don't know whether it can work or not. <laughs> That's your idea. <laughs> It, it's not uh yeah for a basic for a simple scenario yes we can pass that and retrieve information and uh, uh construct it as audio the query string yeah. um but it, if we have a complex or uh, advanced query it could be a problem so we need we need a SQL statement um, parser. <laughs> we have to build a parser first to understand the SQL statement. Surely um, not. <laughs> it's a big task. Um, 
So another question is why do you need to to call the expression? I mean, why do you need a, a prime method first and use that to get a SQL query stream? So you cannot uh, um, use the expression directly. Uh, so I think the idea is to get. So oh, I mean, you're thinking you're thinking crawl the expression tree to get the O data. I mean, because the idea here is to get, to get back to the, to the original back to O the data SQL, stream. right? You want to get to the expected the SQL at the line sixty uh, two. So, Sixty two. So, yeah. So my my test here was just testing mm -hmm. that we could get SQL right. But yeah, I mean, now that we know we can get SQL, what I probably should do actually is write another test and then say, hey, uh, expressions can be converted to O data. And then we take that and then we say, okay, our, our total. Uh, well, using the so we, ha we have an O token, right? Token is going to be our new so we, what we want to do is rebuild this essentially our example o expression which contains our o tokens so our test is essentially um we're we're doing all the stuff that we did above to get our sequel then we take our sequel and we get our token from it and then what we're saying is our token should be equivalent to our example O token. Does that make sense? And then we've gone completely full circle. Is this making sense? Expectancy. Uh, and this goes. <clears throat> See? So this one is checking that we can get SQL. And then this one is checking that we can get the right tokens. And then from the tokens, if we really wanted to, we could rebuild the O expression. So we can go round and round and round. Have I lost you? <laughs> we using the SQL to build a token. So that, yeah, the idea was that we had, um, so let's put some, so we've got um, an OData query, right? OData, which looks like, um, you know, dollar select name, uh, job title in this case, right? Now, in this case, what I've done is I've said, okay, um, given this O expression, which is part of our, our process, right? So that gets processed into our O expression. And then we take our O expression and we give that O expression to our O expression service. And we get back the, in the O expression, we get this, um, where is it? This expression property is populated. Populated, yeah. And we take that. So now we've got an O expression that contains an expression. And then, so given um, our EF uh, set T, we apply our um, expression to it. Yeah. Apply this. And we get out of that our SQL. And then we take our SQL and we build our O token. And then from our O token, uh, we can go back around here and produce our O data. So that, that's the goal, is what we're doing here, is 
So this this stuff here up to O expression, that's what I'm defining above here, which is all stuff that we've built in the past, right? And I'm taking this uh, example O expression, and all I'm doing is I'm throwing it through the O expression service. Yeah. And then that's producing the internal expression. And then the internal expression helps us produce with, with the use of the entity framework, we produce the SQL string. And then from the SQL string, the theory was we break it down. Now we've got our token values. We can build out our new token, right? So if I say O token equals uh, result equals new token. And then in there, that's going to be our, our root token. Yeah. And that's going to have our, our children. So in theory, what we should be doing is reproducing this here from this SQL, where the values are. Um, so we're going to have dollar. If we take this do something like this i'm assuming stuff here okay so our first token is going to be uh, if we look at our it's going to be our select keyword so our select keyword goes back in here see i think you're right though i think we might need to run some sort of parser and then do some sort of comparative translation or something but i'm just simplifying it out right now so we can get something in in principle so we the, the normal just, sql statement always comes with select yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that's the idea right <laughs> so then then we've got all the stuff that we're selecting right so if i've split these things out um then i can replace um i can take this one and i can say okay uh, oh yeah, what we want to do is we want to say whilst we don't have a from keyword or some other keyword like an inner join or left join. So we probably want to do some comparison, right, against the list of SQL keywords. So var, I don't know, okay. SQL keywords. Uh, I just my okay. I don't have my yeah. Go and ask mummy. Sorry, my daughter's talking to me in the background. Yeah, um, you said the girl talk to your mummy. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the way. <laughs> Left, uh, join, etc., etc. Right, this is not going to be an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but let's assume for now, because this is just my quick hack, we'll, we'll just put from in here. Right, and then we say, like, okay. As I said, we need a SQL statement parser to help us to understand the SQL statement. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So now what we're saying is we're saying, um, uh, so while, um, uh, yeah, well, so we, we need an integer, right? In i equals zero, and while token values, I, um, and then we're saying something like okay, SQL keywords dot contains, and we say not that, and we build out a new. So under our root, hmm. our result, save result dot. Children dot children. Oh, I'm making lots of assertions here and assumptions. Uh, children, yeah, so children zero dot. So the trick here is obviously to make this dynamic, right? Mm. So then we're building out our tokens, right? Uh, we're saying the raw value here is. Oh, 
to start from one because we already used zero. So then we say to open values i, um, I don't know, dot trim, because we're going to have a have a comma on the end, aren't we? Uh, voila. Right. Um, there's probably a bit more formatting and stuff we have to do, but in principle, oh, I'm going all over the place now. In principle, that's it. And then we return that. Um, so we're going to have to do things like... So this is going to return like p dot name, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in in here for the first one, and then for the second one, it's going to return um, p dot. Uh, I think it was job title, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's the why it's an infinite yeah. loop. Hi, but Brian. Hi, yeah. Uh, so in theory, we're inside the collect uh, select clause, and we're iterating over each of the the selections that we're making, right? And when we get to the end of the select clause, because it's a valid SQL statement, because you wouldn't assume EF would produce invalid SQL, right? Why would it do that? Um, then you should hit a keyword, a SQL keyword. And as soon as you hit a SQL keyword, you drop out the while loop. And wait, wait, result. wait, I missed something. Did it actually produce SQL? Yeah. So yeah. let's. Let's go back for Hassan's benefit. <laughs> I, lo I love I love to come back and the work is done, so I get to celebrate. I like the celebration part, but the actual work <laughs> part. <laughs> go ahead, okay. Go so so what I did was um, so this is the original unit test, okay. Um, and I was saying to Sam that the next stage, obviously, would be to get tokens from the the SQL that we've generated, right? So this is the SQL that we expect because this is what um, EF generates. So if we run this. Uh, oh, not that one, and debug it, and you should see, uh, come on, Visual Studio. Wow, you actually made Come it. on, Pulse Machine. There we go. So our actual SQL, if we view that. I have, like yeah, uh, SQL, that's, uh, actually, this is for our benefit. You know that, right? This this little uh, what do you call it? Uh, this is not an angle bracket. What do you call a square bracket? Square bracket. This is this is for our benefit. We'll, we won't need to do a lot of parsing. We can just go and say anything that is dot open square bracket. That's a property that we care about. And then we're gonna go and convert it into O data. This is easy. This makes things easy actually. But it works. Yeah, Look what, at you. What Paul <laughs> doing? I did a thing, yeah. Uh, so then all, all I'm doing in that unit test is literally comparing that against my expected SQL. And I know from up here where I hard coded my um, original O expression as my example, let's look at that. Um, then obviously I know what I'm expecting, right? So mm -hmm. I did have slightly different SQL in there because I wrote the, the human version of it where I just said select name, job title. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously once it had spat it out, I realized that EF is slightly different. Mm -hmm. but it's not invalid so i just changed my expected to match what i actually got um, yeah. now obviously this is a very rigid very specific case so the next stage in this obviously is to make this a lot more dynamic and sam was talking about needing like sql parsers and things like that just to make sure that we're getting what what we need to get and, and we interpret the sql statement properly but i said okay with that in mind um, mm -hmm. The next stage in this process to complete the, the loop that I described up here. So mm -hmm. here's our original O data. We turned that into an O expression through, I can't remember what the, um, the services were, but there was a whole set of services, wasn't there, um, that we built up to the O expression service point. Mm -hmm. um, so then what we did was we took our O expression, we gave that to our O expression service, um, mm -hmm. and that populates the expression proper property. We apply that to our EF set of type T, and we get back our SQL statement. Mm -hmm. And then from our SQL statement, we're going to build an O token. Nice. Which yep. in theory will be our root O token, which will look much like this. And from our O token, you can we go can back to express yeah. that back to, to, o, to data. o data. Nice. So um, I've Damn. written another unit test um, just to basically say, hey, I'm going to do the same thing as what I did up here. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm going to produce my uh, SQL. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get tokens from SQL. So I've just written a simple method down here and I've just basically hard coded my expectation here. Stuff like, for example, drilling down through the children, we would never do in a proper implementation. So this is by no means the final result, but this is in principle what we're trying to produce, right? Can I tell you this, Paul? You are one badass engineer. This is amazing. This is perfect. I love it. <laughs> I think the devil's in the detail here. Like doing something hard coded when you know exactly what you're dealing with is is dead simple. And you know, I've, I've spent a little bit of time just to sort of have a bit of think about it. Did my homework in the week, as you uh, yep. kind of expected. So, in theory, what this is going to return in its current form is is p dot name and p dot job title. Um, so if I now run this. Felipe, Felipe, turn on your camera and, and your microphone so you can talk. He, he left us a comment there. He said, caution, using square braces in SQL is optional. Not sure if Entity Framework will always return the SQL statements. Well, well, it's coded, right? So it's it's programmed this way. And I think it's intentional too, Felipe. I think that's the, I think that's the standard SQL kind of returning, not, not how we're using things, you know, when we type these SQL queries, but... Uh, Paul, yeah. damn, this is, this is it, right there. Uh, I think I might have messed something up because I've not hit my breakpoint. What have I hit? Uh, tell you what, I'll, uh, oh God, Visual Studio is throwing a fit. Let's let Windows and Visual Studio have a think for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Will it be? All right, stop. I'm going to start again, really. Felipe okay. is Felipe is there, but his camera and his microphone are not working, so I can't add him to the chat. Okay, I will so we... I will get a cam next time. <laughs> do the cam thing, okay? Yeah, and get Felipe, and get a microphone just, too. It's important. Yeah, just go ahead. Just share your address to Hassan. Keep <laughs> address to Hassan. Yeah. <laughs> I think he can still join, but it just shows him as a, like a default icon, doesn't he? No, I tried to add them. It says you will need to. They will need to connect their camera to in order for them to be able to join. They just can't. Oh. They can. They can hear and see us, but they can't. They can't join. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, my daughter's not too loud in the background. I'm conscious that she's whining. Um, no so worries. yeah, I've I've rerun the same logic in the uh, SQL test uh, mm -hmm. in the new uh, convert to OData test, and so here's my SQL statement. And I'm going to call into my get tokens from the SQL. So I've just done a simple split here. I've replaced the new lines with just a, a space. Um, and then I split on the space. And so I end up with a string array of the various bits of my SQL query. And mm -hmm. so the principle here is this is kind of what we would build into our, our next service, right, when we start actually implementing this stuff. Um, nice. But I'm using uh, unit testing here as my kind of playground i guess to mess with it you know without the constraints of having to do it properly <laughs> um so what i've done is i have to find um, an array of sql keywords because as soon as i hit one of these keywords i know i'm at the end of the property list that i'm selecting from and mm -hmm. obviously the the first um token value is is the keyword select mm -hmm. so i can see that from the array here so i can say right okay my i define my root o token and inside my root O token, um, there's an array, um, my, my children, effectively. And the first nice. child is my select, which yep. I'm getting from that first item in my array. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is um, I've got my new my list of O tokens, and I need to build these out, essentially. And I'm building them out in a while loop. So I'm saying, hey, from I equals 1, oh, I probably need to uh, increment my I, right? Otherwise, I'll end up in a never-ending loop, which is probably why it didn't hit this breakpoint before. Because it's still looping. <laughs> so if I take out my uh, breakpoints now, uh, I should hit this result here. And I should have something that looks, with the exception of this bracketed stuff, looks much like our original O token. So here we go. We've got a say what I'll put it in the uh, watch window, and we can crawl through it all. Let's get rid of all this stuff. So I've got an O token with one child. Um, that child is our 
select, dollar select. You can see the casing we might want to fix. I don't know if uppercase, lowercase is important, but it's considered to be a keyword. Um, and then I've got my two children of that. And the first one is p.main, as it was in the SQL statement, because I haven't done any further processing on that yet, as expected. And then there's a second one, p.job title. So a little bit more cleanup. Um, yeah, this is a little bit more dynamicness to it. Yeah, Paul, this is this is a great POC. Submit that as a POC branch. Did you call it wordy breaking stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that works too. Yeah, I created a new <laughs> branch called Wardy's breaking stuff or something so, like that. Uh, so listen, so listen, let's have our let's have our Friday session to take that code and standardize it. Put it behind Wardy a broker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, at, well, at, least, at least you didn't push to main. I'm okay with that. <laughs> or master. This is it. Yeah, sorry about that. So last, <laughs> last week, guys, for your information in the background, um, for anyone who's watching, I yeah. accidentally pushed three commits. I fixed a couple of other bits and bobs um, that I'd noticed were just like broken unit tests. I also have another fix for um, the internal mock library. That oh, fixes... please push that fix. Yeah, so you can see some of these unit tests here. Um, oh, oh, that's that are perfect. failing. Um, basically, um, if you if you add an extra parameter into one of the reflection calls, it just goes away. So yeah, it's a really trivial thing. Um, what I wanted to do uh, was probably off stream, but I'll get together with you, Hassan, and we'll, yep. Let's we'll do, do it the proper way, and you can talk yeah. me through it because yep. me and Git. Uh, yeah, best friends. Yeah, <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends. Yeah. Let's let, let's let's do that. Let's do that Friday. This is amazing, man. Like you know, this is a huge push for this project. I I mean, this is the last round. Do you understand? Like the last round, and then we go write an acceptance test and basically tell people, okay, here's the select scenario completed from the moment you pass in a dollar sign select a bunch of parameters to the moment you get it back as SQL or you get it back as a raw O data query, which is the transcendence piece. So you basically did both. You did the, the transcendence and the modularization in one shot. Now we just need to cover the filter command, order by command and all that, which is fine. We'll keep going. This is becoming now a part of my life. Like this is the 63rd or 64th session. So this now has become a part of the the rhythm and you know all in all just to give it like the best this has been quite fast for a project that we're kicking on the side while we're doing our daily jobs you know this is this is fantastic so anyway yeah just push this into a poc pr and uh a draft pr and then guys let's let's pick the rest of this on friday sam are you going to be available on friday absolutely yes okay let's do it friday what do you think paul yeah, yeah. What happened uh, to you? You just went a thousand miles away. What? Did I? <laughs> uh, do you need help committing code? <laughs> I was just, I was just thinking. Um, there was, there was something else that I fixed. Oh yeah, um, I noticed that, that there was something I wanted to raise about the unit tests. I noticed that a lot of the unit tests were passing even when the code was noticeably broken. So I think there might be a logical flaw somewhere in the unit tests. Um, Okay. I was finding. Oh, that... you mean the one in the broker for the expression broker? That's that's only because it's not covered by unit tests. This will be covered by acceptance tests. Like the broker right. is outside of the realm of unit tests, right? So the, yeah, this is what I wanted to raise with you: is should the code that we have in the expression broker really be in an expression service behind the broker or something to that effect? No, no, no. So we can no, make no, no, sure no, no, that no. it gets we unit just, tested. No, no, no. We'll, we'll just write an acceptance test. Acceptance test will hit all the way down to the broker and come back. Oh, the only, yeah, the only difference between an acceptance and unit test is that acceptance is just test the happy path. Yeah, just, we just haven't got end-to-end -end yet, which yep. explains why we've got gaps in the test. Yeah, that yep. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, um, I, I did have a question, though, um, with, regarding this, which was essentially brokers shouldn't contain any business logic. And I it, sort of it, looked they at shouldn't. This, mm -hmm. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, this is kind of business logic that we're putting Why? in the broker. So is where is, where is the logic here? Where is the logic? Where is we're it? We're calling the compiler, man. This is not trivial code. So, so the call to an external uh, resource, that's literally what brokers are. They abstract away the call to an external uh, resource. Get script. We're building a script. 
this 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 is this is somewhat business logic yes i agree with you get script options we're building the options out yeah this might be but the call to get yeah. script is i agree we're so, gonna need uh, to think yeah. a little bit about that one that i agree with you 100 percent. the building the script piece yeah that's business logic i have some ideas though because i think that the bulk of this broker could potentially just be moved up into the um OX, into the expression service and then the expression service can hand down these things as parameters because they're all part of the uh. So we could have like, um, you know, uh, we could build potentially, dare I say it, this is probably a bad call, but I'll call it an entity rather than a DTO, but I was going to use the term DTO, which basically <laughs> wraps up all of these arguments that the Roslyn call is going to need. So we can uh -huh. build them in the expression service and it's just a straight call. And then all the broker has to do is a straight through. So then what we would then make sure of is we could actually unit test it. So we don't need an acceptance test for this logic. So that was another idea I that I had. I'm, um, I'm, I'm okay with that logic. It, I'm okay with building the statement on the expression service and then going and saying, hand this over to hand these options over to the broker. I'm okay with that logic. That's totally fine by me. Nice. So yeah, just minor cleanup stuff, but yeah, I'm finding little little quirks like here, internal mark and yep. Yeah, so I I hit a lot more hurdles than I was expecting to, but bottom line, we got it working, right? Yes, sir. So, you got it working. Thank you. Milestone. <laughs> the, the missing piece was was um what uh Sam threw at me, uh, which was this uh, <laughs> yeah this this unary stuff. That was the bit that I was missing. If, if I could have figured that out. And I just didn't have the time, basically. I just ran out of time. And I thought, well, Sam's going to know the answer to this, obviously, right? Because Sam's a genius. So I just <laughs> went, yeah, yeah, Sam will know. <laughs> Expression trees are his his jam, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. All I'm right. Talking too much again. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're, so, you're, you're, you're proud uh, ship, of... Ship uh, washing at Friday and Paul? Yeah, yeah, what? super well. Brilliant. Um, we'll have oh, a production Sam. by uh, mid next week, right? <laughs> Sa Sam, just, just if I, it's probably going to be next week or the week after at maximum. Like, we might have our very first alpha release in, uh, in, in, in early November, probably, very likely, before people start going on vacations and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, let's just keep this going. Uh, you know, don't. Don't forget to submit this, you know, if you know how, <laughs> as a POC. So make sure you have a, a very large POC tag on your uh, uh, PR so nobody merges it by mistake. And just say, you know, um, expression to SQL. And that it. Sure. Yep. Sam, we can't sit, we can't hear you. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, says Paul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. Yep, hit that create PR. Do you see it? It's in blue. <laughs> we can't hear him either. Everyone is muting their side. I don't know what. Sorry. Uh, did you want me to pull it into the main as well through the the PR? I, I was going to leave it there until we were until we'd actually refactored it into services and then PR the services in effectively. Because at the moment, that's junk code. We know we're going to throw it away, right? Yeah. Uh, keep, keep all of it there. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay with that. Me too. Okay. All right, my friend. Thank you all so very much for your hard work on this. And uh, let's connect Friday. Okay? Appreciate mm. you all. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.